Hello everyone, welcome to Tuesday. Did a stream, specifically the first 20 stream. Um, it was, uh, it was, it was long and we started early. We started around 3.15, I think, and it's now 9, so almost six hours long. Yeah, but we played a lot of interesting games, um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about them after I eat dinner. But first I have to eat dinner. So it's after dinner and it's time to discuss the games I played in June 2020. Now, lately, uh, for first 20 streams, I've been covering five games, but today was, it was impossible. It was impossible because we played such long, long games. The first game was The Outer Worlds, and this is a uh, action RPG that came out uh, last year. It's it's uh, it's in the style of games like um, Fallout or Skyrim, like the the Bethesda games I really typically enjoy. And um, the version I got I played today was the Switch version because it came out for Xbox and PS4 and uh, PC last year, but it didn't come out until recently on Switch. And you know. Um, when I loaded up the game for the first time, it didn't leave a great impression because I got this screen telling me to make sure that I wore wrist straps for the Joy-Cons, and I could my controller is instantly like disconnected from the Switch, and I had been using a Pro controller, and uh, I was like, "What's what's going on?" And I thought, "Okay, this is weird, but it's forcing me to use the Joy Cons." So I took the Joy Cons off, and I still couldn't clear it. Turns out. Even though I was playing all this docked, you had to physically touch the button on the screen. Why would you have to do that? I have no idea. But it was frustrating. Very frustrating. That was the very first thing that happened in the stream. We load up Outer Worlds, and I'm like, cool, we're you know gonna start playing this. Gives me a warning thing, and I have to go physically pull the switch out of the dock and touch the screen to progress. Why? That has never happened on any other Switch game I've ever played. I'm not sure why that was here. But, try to overlook that, move on. Um, the good news, the game itself is great. I actually, I was right. It's a game that I would really, really like. It's, it's the same like full featured um, RPG experience and it's the setting and the tone of the game are wonderful. It's hilarious. It's very, very funny, but the Switch version doesn't look great. And, and when I say it doesn't look great, you might be thinking, well, you know, I understand it's the Switch version. It's not as powerful as, you know, the competition. It's going to be not as pretty. Eh, no, worse than that. Worse than that. Um, it's it's kind of hard to explain without seeing the visuals, but like, when you're talking, when, you, when you're in a conversation with someone, you're having the, the dialogue, the game looks, I think the game looks fine. I think for the, for the Switch, the game looks fine. But... As soon as you're done and you are out of that conversation, you're back in like the, the world and you're walking around, the game looks bad. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look great. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that they, they did all they could in, in terms of porting a game like that to the, to the Switch. Um, and I don't even want to, to claim to know anything about how that process takes place because I just don't. I just know visually it's, you know, it's, it's pretty lacking. Um, and for some people that may not matter because just the idea of being able to play the Outer Worlds on the go, which is, you know, from what I played is a genuinely fun game, that might be enough for them to pick it up on the Switch. But if you have another option and you plan on playing it at home, I would definitely play it on anything else. Um, it's not a very pretty game. Um, oh, as a side note, all of the games that we played tonight were dev keys. Um, Outer Worlds uh, and, all, and the other three were all dev keys, um, which is the first time that's happened. Usually we have a, one or two dev keys in there mixed in, but, um, but I mean, we just had a lot of stuff to cover and it was all provided by uh, developers. But uh, yeah, again, the game itself is great. I really liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I could see myself you know, playing it and enjoying it, but unless you have to play it on the Switch, like if that's your only console or if you just really want to play it on the go, um, 
it's just not a pretty game on the Switch, unfortunately. Uh, next game I played was actually the Bioshock Collection. Uh, Nintendo had sent me an email and asked if I wanted to, to, to play it, and I said yes. And I know that I've already covered all three of the Bioshock games to, you know, completion, but I wanted to see what Bioshock 1 looked like on the Switch. And you know what? It looks really good. Looks really good. Like, it's Bioshock. It's portable. And uh, I gotta admit, this, especially coming at it right after playing The Outer Worlds, probably made Bioshock look even better. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it looked it looked what I expected, you know, the, the Switch is capable of. Short of like first party, because Nintendo always gets amazing mileage out of the, the graphic the graphical department of their, their consoles. But um, yeah, it, it looked good and it was Bioshock running for the first time ever on a Nintendo system. And it was really cool. Not a whole lot to say about it otherwise. Um, then I finally got to try out Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, um, also courtesy of Nintendo. And, uh, you know, I've, I've only ever played Xenoblade once with Emil when I was visiting him years and years and years ago, and I, I didn't remember it that well. But I got to play it, and obviously it looks way better. I think it, one of the, the things to really remember is that Xenoblade Chronicles was for the Wii, and the Wii was a standard definition system. This is the first time that the game is being is, is running in uh, in HD, and it looks so much better. Like, you know, Xenoblade is probably a bit of a marvel on on the Wii, um, but it finally finally really lives up to the scope of the game. Like the graphics live up to the scope of the game on the on the Switch, and um, it's an interesting game. There's it's it's more like it's more like collecting quests the game, because you wander around and you collect hundreds of quests, and you sometimes you collect a quest and you've, you've already completed it. But, um... I, I, God, I, I played 100 minutes of Outer Worlds and also 100 minutes of, of Xenoblade, and I collected so many quests in that time. And um, I made a point to play past the point that I had played with Emil all those years ago, because I could vaguely remember and uh, I basically played the first chapter of the game, which was, you know, like I said, 90 minutes or so. And um, it's it's different. The combat style is not something I like. It's it's set up like an MMO where you your character's automatically attacking as long as you're close to the, the enemy and you've got all these different um, special attacks and special things that you can do. And it's not that the combat is bad, but it's different in a way that feels unfamiliar to me. Um, and, I don't know, it's, it's not my favorite style of combat in, that, in these sorts of games. Um, but it looks, it looks like it could certainly be very in-depth. Like, like, on the surface, it is get close to enemy, your guy automatically attacks. But because the battle's never paused, it seems like it would get really, really complex later on, because if you want to survive, you're probably going to have to be very aware of everything that's happening. So I'm sure that it's like, high, there's high level play involved in order to progress meaningfully through the game. But uh, the story part is 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 fun, it's, it's good. I like that, uh, it's such a minor thing, but I like that when you equip items, your character, like the, the overworld model of the character also changes, so it shows that you're wearing that stuff. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a game that, I hope to one day work my way through and, and see what it's all about throughout the whole thing. But having had a chance to finally play the first 90 minutes, I feel a little bit more familiar with what the what the game is offering, I suppose. And I'm just glad I finally got to play a little bit of it. And then the final game we played um, was Monster Train. This is also a dev key. Um, a good buddy of mine actually worked on the game and was like, hey, you do videos. Do you want to do a video on the, the game that we're releasing? And I was like, yeah, that'd be fine. Monster Train plays like Slay the Spire, but mixed in with Tower Defense. And it's really, really cool. Like, if you liked Slay the Spire, you will like Monster Train. You just will. Like, it's just Slay the Spire, but there's more to it. Um, it's a little more complex because you've got 
Uh, you've got multiple units. Um, you have got uh, a system where, depending on which units are in front or behind, that is how damage is dealt. And then the most interesting thing is that there are floors. So the premise is like you are creatures from hell and you're trying to get back to hell and you're on a train. It's a little weird, but the, there's floors to the train and you've got these angels that keep coming in and you have to defeat them. And everyone does one round of combat and then the angels move up to the next floor. So you have got to continually build units and it's a deck building game. It's like Slay the Spire. You have to continually build the units in anticipation of where the angels are going to be and you can't let them get to the top because then they'll start doing damage to your life force and your life force is what you need as you continue through you know all of the different levels so you have to make sure that that stays high it was um, it was really interesting and uh, it seemed just as complex and more so than Slay the Spire and Slay the Spire is one of the, my favorite games that I played in recent years um, and Monster Train seems like a game I'd really, really love. So I don't know personally what their plans are for porting, because right now it is only on Windows, but that is a game that is very good and needs to come to other uh, platforms, um, you know, Mac, Linux, and then especially I would love to see it on, uh, you know, consoles and mobile. It's, that, is, that is a game that needs to come to mobile. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, it was really good. It was really good. And that was uh, that was the four games I played. And by the time that I finished those, we started the stream a little after 3 p.m. When I finished playing Monster Train, it was nine. So it was almost six hours. And uh, I was like, you know what? I need to stop. As much as I wanted to do a fifth game, I was like, I need to stop. I really need to stop. So we did, and we made the rest of the pierogies. It turned out better. They did turn out better. I didn't burn the onions and the bacon. Yeah. They were better. We didn't film them, but you know, it was what we, sh what we showed yesterday, but better. Um, so it was nice. I, I had a good evening and I'm glad I got, uh, you know, it certainly would have been nicer to get five games done, but the games I played were really long and um, it's not typical to do two 100 minute uh first 20s like that, but hopefully folks will enjoy them. Um, and, you know, both games are objectively good, you know. You may not be a uh, super fan of the, the, the style of combat in Xenoblade like I was, but it doesn't diminish the fact that the game is objectively good, because um, it is. Uh, and as for Outer Worlds, I mean, I really enjoyed what I played, but it's just, it's not the prettiest looking game on Switch, unfortunately. But the game itself, from what I played, it still seems very solid and very fun. So, depends what you're what you're looking for and, and where you want to play said game. Anyway, I'm tired. I'm tired. So we're gonna go to bed, and that's fine. Might sleep in just a tiny bit tomorrow because I've been feeling a little bleh today, and I didn't nap. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I get a big day tomorrow too because tomorrow uh, I jump full force back into recording Morning Mario. Um, I try to always do that the day after I do a first 20 stream, just because it's far more convenient, because everything's already set up. So, that's my agenda tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, and let's be back tomorrow, shall we?